Hey guys, it's Brian from Spreadsheet Sports, and I'm here to walk you through the NFL projection tool. So I'm going to assume that you've downloaded the file from the site and you've installed the Solver plugin uh, that it explains in the in the user guide. But after that, you should be ready to get started and start using the tool to create projections and to find optimal lineups. So the first thing that you will, you'll want to do is make sure you set the fantasy site to the site that you're going to be finding the lineup for. Uh, so right over here in the left hand side you'll see the fantasy site and the drop down that uh, will let you choose what site you want to create the lineup for. So I'm going to keep it with FanDuel for right now. And then I'm going to move over here to the right hand side uh, where it kind of has the, the game list as far as what games you want to include based on the contest that you're building the lineup for. So if you're, uh, if you're doing a Sunday only slate, uh, you'll, you'll want to make sure you only include those games. If you want the Thursday game in included or not, you'll need to, to set that here. So if you don't want a game included, so say I don't want the Thursday game included, I only want the Sunday and Monday slate, I'd put a zero there for that game. Uh, so now you have your, your game list set up and, and that should flow through to the optimal lineups. And now you can kind of start to get into customizing the projections the way that you would like to have them. So uh, there's a couple different components in here and I'll definitely refer you to the user guide for the full explanation of how everything uh, fits in, but I'll, I'll kind of do a quick rundown right now. So this first section is all of the different adjustments you can use in your projection settings. So if you scroll over here to the left, you'll see uh, the situation for each game. So the Vegas line, the Vegas total, where, where the game is being played, stadium size, etc. And you can kind of see how that affects a given player. So um, if, if the Vegas line is 49, is that, is that positive or negative for a player? And how does that kind of adjust all the way through this, this adjustments tab right here? So you can choose which ones of these you actually want to affect the projections. If there's a certain one that you want to turn off, you can go ahead and set that to no uh, right up here. Uh, then the next component is going to be your player history projections. So uh, there are four different options that you can use. The preseason, season, last three games, and defense. So it's going to use those historical projections uh, when it comes to, to passing yards, um, you know, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, all of those different values, it's going to look at each player and how they've performed over these time periods. And you can choose which time periods actually get uh, put in play in the projections by uh, editing these values up here. So these should add up to one. Uh, if you want to put more weight on the preseason uh, projections, or if you want in-season data to be the bulk of, of what you use for that, um, that's kind of how you can set these here. The defense looks at the defense that the team is playing and um, kind of contrasts that against what the player actually averages in terms of rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, uh, and what the defense actually allows to opposing uh, running backs. So that's how the defense falls into to play there. Then you have your final projections. So you have your, your player history projections, uh, as I explained up here, and how big of a component that is in the final projection. The adjustment is, uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, all of those different values. It, it basically takes the player and, and his history completely out of context. So it just takes, um, you know, for Aaron Rodgers, for example, a quarterback uh, who was in a game against the defense in Trank 29, uh, with a Vegas total of 49, playing away, playing outdoors, all of those different components, not knowing that it's Aaron Rodgers, what would his projection be? So that's kind of the, how the adjustment piece of that works. Uh, the rank looks at the weekly ranking from Fantasy Pros, which aggregates rankings from all around the Internet. And it looks at how well historically a player has scored at that ranking. So the number one receiver, how many points have they scored historically versus the number 24 receiver uh, and projects going down that way. And then the depth chart component uh, looks at any 
player who would be in a different position on the depth chart than normally. So if a backup running back is going to be getting a start this weekend, uh, it's going to look at how many points the player that um, that has been in that position before has typically scored um, and, and use that as an adjustment for the player that will be stepping into that position. Uh, so like I said, all of these, these full calculations are in the user guide. So if you, if you want to understand the math behind those, uh, please, please take a look at that. But that's kind of how each of those components works. Um, you can always take a look at all of the different uh, stats that are provided in here for each player. You'll also see uh, some, some injury uh, statuses in here and, and whether or not they expect to play in the game. You'll also see ex expected ownership percentage in terms of ownership across all uh, players in a given fantasy contest for that week, and, and that's an estimated value. It's not going to be exact because we don't know the exact number. And then the risk level, which is how often a player scores less than 15 fantasy points. So if they've never scored 15 fantasy points before, uh, they're going to have a risk level of 100. Uh, for that particular season, if you know they're they're very consistent, they're always getting at least 15. You know they they they'll have a much lower risk level. So once you you know you make those changes up here in the projection settings, you should be good to go. Uh, you can go over to the manual adjustments tab. Uh, this is where you can exclude players. You can exclude individual teams uh, for your lineup. You can put manual adjustments in here. So if you if you have a hunch that Andrew Luck is just going to have a huge game, and regardless of what his projection says, you know right now it says 19.37, but you think there's no way he's going to score less than you know 25 points, you're going to add you're going to add six points to his projection. Uh, it's going to give him 25 points, and you can kind of go through and and make changes uh, on a on an individual basis to any players there. You can also load your own set of custom projections for all players. If you get them from another site, uh, you just put the player name and the projected points in this column here, and it will use your, your projections. Uh, there's also a lineup guarantee, so if there's a handful of players that you want uh, to definitely include in your lineup, that's where you would place them. You would put their name in here, uh, and then this will be filled with any uh, players that will be in a new role in a new role that that particular week if they're going to be the the top running back and typically they're the backup uh, th these will be included in here finally you can click this button right here that says refresh lineup field with and weather for updated data on uh, injury reports on the Vegas lines and on the weather so uh, those can be refreshed on demand, and they go pull data directly from uh, the websites that provide them. So that will be updated to demand. Now you're finally ready to go on to the Optimal Lineup tab. Um, this is where you're going to find the best possible lineup based on your projections that you've, that you've created. Um, so once you're here, uh, there isn't a ton that you need to do. There is uh, a new feature here that I've added. So... If you are trying to build uh, a lineup for a particular contest, if you're looking to build a lineup for uh, a, a GPP or for a cash game, there are different settings here based on the average ownership percentage and the average risk level. Uh, so you can set these to you know, a GPP, so you'll have ownership percentage that is lower and risk level that is able to be higher in a GPP versus a cash game where you want your ownership to be relatively high and your risk level to be lower. You can also set your own um, custom settings here where you set a max ownership percentage across your entire lineup and average risk level as well. But I'm going to leave this to none right now. I don't, I don't need to have a particular lineup uh, setting. I, I just want to get the best possible lineup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this find optimal lineup button. And you should see in the bottom left corner, you should see the percentage done. Usually takes about five to six seconds. And you'll see the lineup change with the best possible lineup 
based on your projections. So that's it for the, the projection tool. Uh, there are two buttons over here that I will get into in the next videos. This will uh, allow you to send it to the optimizer, which can generate multiple lineups at once. And then the lineup generator, which allows you to select um, your own custom list of, of players and then find all possible lineups with those players in mind.